So today I'm going to be going through everything related to the EGR cooler on the PX Ford Ranger. And I'm going to be going through the process of bypassing them, blanking them, removing them and installing them on both the 2.2 litre and the 3.2 litre. So the process is exactly the same on both of them. As you can see here, um, the EGR cooler itself runs along the back of the motor and what it does, it recirculates the exhaust gases by passing them through here, cooling them and then sending them back up into the intake and recirculating them through there. So these EGR coolers are pretty known for failing and when they do fail, they can send water into the engine when what it does is the water comes back in through here. Sometimes it may fill up these uh, exhaust runners and actually go into the cylinder that way. Or another way that it can come into the engine is it's actually blown through, through here, back up into the intake and then into the combustion chamber that way. So if your EGR cooler does fail on you, there's a quick and easy bypass method that you can do to get your car mobile again. And the first thing you wanna do is get your hands on a bit of 15 millimeter rubber hose. That's 15 millimeter diameter, probably about a meter and a half in length. This one is just like a bit of scrap that I had laying around. So I'm just gonna use this as a bit of a guide. But yeah, see if you can get yourself on about a meter and a half worth of hose, 15 millimeters internal diameter, and I'll show you what to do next. So what you want to do next is to come up to where your heater core is, which is this location over here. And as you can see, I had this hose here. This is the original hose that was plugged in to that heater core where I now have my bypass pipe. So this is my bypass pipe here. And what you want to do is just done exactly what I did. Just put your new pipe in, which is this one here, put a hose clamp on it and then route it down that way. And I'll show you where to go next. This is the pipe that originally connected to our heater core. Now we've disconnected this one and in doing so, you've now bypassed this whole cooling system here to where it comes back down to there and completely stopped the fluid from coming into this cooler pipe and leaking out into your engine. So now with your new bypass hose running in, so it'll come down there, I'll show you where to connect it to next. So there's essentially two spots that you can connect it to. The first one being here. So if you're looking of a, you know, more so factory finish, um, you want to just connect it straight to that one there. With this one, you can just put that to the side. With my car, put a little bit of a bung in there and just slid that hose clamp down just to, you know, have it sitting off to the side. It's not a big deal. The main thing is to um, get yourself mobile again. So as you can see, that is now bypassed. So the coolant's gonna run down through here, back around there, and back to the water pump. So obviously it's gonna be a lot more difficult with the engine than that in the car. So this video is just mainly for demonstration purposes on this engine that I have sitting here so you know where exactly to connect it to. So if you find this one's a little bit difficult to get to because of the tightness, you can come in from underneath here. Just slide the hose clamp off. If you can get it, like so. And you can just basically connect that straight up to there, like that. So this is just some random piping I had laying around. All well, it is, it's just a 15 mil joiner for your standard garden hose. What you can do is just simply put it in there like that. Grab your bypass pipe here from the top. Obviously with your hose clamp in place, slide that on. Do both those hose clamps up tight. There's your bypass done. You just wanna loop that around the top there and connect this here back up to your heater core. And essentially, there is your bypass done and dusted. So the next thing I'm gonna cover is EGR blanking. And what EGR blanking is, is these blanking plates that you can buy online. So they usually come in a set of two, 
Uh, they're about, you know, between 20 to 30 bucks. You can pick them up on eBay. And essentially what they do is they just slot in to the EGR valve there and it blocks the gases from coming in through there and going up and entering the intake. So one goes in there. The other one, which is this one here, that slots in down the back here and goes in like that. Um, but I'll show you how to do this first one here first. So all you do is just loosen up these uh, 10 mil bolts here. Obviously your access is gonna be a bit more tighter when you're working with the car in the engine bay. Um, but you don't have to take them all the way out. You just loosen them enough so this EGR valve here becomes loose and you've got enough room to now slot this here in. As you can see, it's got the cutouts on the top and the bottom. So that enables you not to actually have to remove the valve all the way, but just loosen it up enough so you can slot it in like so. Might just loosen this one off a little bit more. Once you've got it loose enough for it to go all the way in, you know, just double check it. Make sure it's in there properly. It's just a matter of um, now tightening up these 10 mil bolts on the top and on the bottom. So essentially that's one side of the EGR blanked. You can do one side or you can do both sides, it's up to you. Um, this one here is probably the easiest one to do. It's just got easier access, even though it's still pretty tight when the motor's in the car. Uh, this back one is a bit harder to get to, which I'll show you now. But um, what I found that when I did mine, um, I actually come in underneath the car and, you know, with the catalytic converter that comes down here, it is pretty tight for room and I was struggling to, um, to get to that one because I, on my car, I actually blanked this side. I didn't bother about the other side. Um, but anyway, I'll show you how to do this side. So you've got four bolts here holding the heat shield on. Obviously, when you're doing this, when the engine's in the car, it's going to be a bit more difficult because you'll have the catalytic converter coming through on this side. Um, but yeah, these four bolts, so there's usually four bolts, but I only got three on this one. Just take the heat shield off and that'll expose your one down there, two, three bolts here. So with these ones, you actually have to take them all the way out, which I'll show you now. Once you got these all the way out, your next step is gonna be just to loosen these bolts off on the exhaust manifold. So you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You don't have to take them all the way out. You just gotta loosen them off, um, you know, probably about five or so mil, just so you can swing this exhaust manifold forward a little bit enough to slot that blanking plate in. So with these exhaust manifold bolts, they're just a 13 mil. Once again, you're just probably backing them off about five or so mil. Um, don't have to go all the way with them, just enough to slide that exhaust manifold forward, not forward sideways. So once you've backed those bolts off, you know, five or so mil, you'll now be able to come over this side and um, get your blanking plate. It's just a matter of sliding it in like so. like that. And then all you're doing is just lining up your bolt holes so you can get your bolts back in. So once you've got all your bolts back in and line them all up, all it is is just a matter of coming back through, tightening up these bolts. These are 10 mil by the way. And going through and just doing up those exhaust manifold bolts. And that is how you blank the EGR, both on this side and this side here. And last of all is gonna be the removal of the complete EGR cooler itself, which has gotta be done in stages, starting from this intake part, moving on to the EGR valve, and then eventually the cooler. So as you can see on the actual car, there is a bit of a process in removing it all as there are a few things in the way. So you're gonna to have to remove this bracketry here, this filter and the battery. I do have a video on my channel on how to remove all that. Uh, so I'll drop that link in the description right now. You might have to fast forward maybe half an hour into the video where it actually gets to removing this part here. 
So that'll then give you access to start working on everything down here. So then all you do is just a Phillips head screwdriver to undo this hose clamp, pop the intake pipe off, and then you've got a series of eight mil bolts, one here, one below it, one there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. Actually, it's right there. So they come out pretty easily. This intake pipe should now come off. Look at that. Crustaceans. So this is a good reason why you should blank your EGR cooler um, or at least get a intake clean every you know couple of months if you've still got your EGR in place. It's just you know caked in there full of all sorts of crud. Mind you, apparently this motor's only done 140,000 kilometers. Um, the reason why it's here is I actually bought this motor on Marketplace for really cheap, just for spare parts mostly. Um, but what I think has happened is someone has tried to, I think, do the timing or the timing chain. Um, and in the process, they've actually stuffed the timing up and one of the valves has hit the pistons. So I've got no idea why they'd want to do a timing chain on this. I've done 330,000 Ks on that car on the original timing change and never had the front cover off. So next is gonna be just to remove these coolant lines here, that one there and that one there that we just had off. Nice and simple process. Just move those hose clamps up like so. Slide that off. Same as the bottom one here. So there would normally be a plug here, which would just unclip straight out like that. Um, there's also, from this side here, you got two 10 mil bolts coming in there to the actual cooler. So we'll hit that next. As you can see, this now comes straight out. Don't forget the little gasket. All right, so with your EGR valve now out of the way, there's a 13 mil right there. At this stage, you don't want to undo it, you just want to loosen it up. So just loosen it up and leave it there for the time being. And now we're gonna move on to this side here, which is the exhaust side. Um, just keep in mind, obviously your access is gonna be a lot harder with the engine in the car. So I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, just show you, so you know whether you know all the bolts are and what sizes they are and how to get to them. Um, because yeah, obviously with the engine in the car, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to, get, to access them. Okay, so now on the exhaust side, you've got one, two, three, four, eight mil bolts for the heat shield. I've only got three in place on this motor. There's one missing, but you know, you get the drift. There goes the heat shield. So now, as you can see here, we've got one, two, and three down there. You can see that third one there. Yeah, there it is. Three 10 mil bolts, which hold the cooler on from this side. And that's what we're gonna be removing now. So just gotta set my camera up in a good position. Hopefully this angle will capture that. As you can see, the EGR cooler has now dropped down. So, all we do now is you're just gonna have to remove that 13 mil that we undid earlier. And your EGR cooler 
is now ready to be removed. This is the exhaust side. So I just thought I'd mention, once you've got the EGR cooler loose and you're removing it, you should then have enough room to actually bring that around and lift it up out the top like that. So reinstallation is just gonna be the exact reverse of the removal process, which we just saw. So that's it for the EGR Cooler video. I hope that you found it informative in some sort of way. If you have, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys on the next video.